Hello, everybody. I'm going to pause for just a second, make sure we're streaming, that we're live. And it looks like we are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just need to snag our YouTube URL. And I just got to put it into our day two stream on the bootcamp subscriber hub. Like I've told you guys, I'm a one woman show when I do these. So I have to kind of get all of the streams and all of the stuff set up as I'm getting started. I really want to do on some of the future ones, just like some, some almost like elevator music. I just need to figure out how to do that without it getting copyrighted. Um, that's usually what happens because I've done stuff like this before inside of my members club. Um, and whenever I put like some fun music in the background, it always gets copyrighted, which is so irritating. But I'm so excited for today. Today is probably, I'm probably going to say this every day, actually, but today is probably one of my favorite days because if you know me at all, you know that I am a systems nerd. And today we are going to be talking about creating sustainable systems. We are going to be talking about all the things that you need, all the, the facets you need to think about for your business, but also just some of the core tenants that I have found to be stupidly helpful when it comes to really making sure that you have sustainable systems for your business and your life. So I'm really pumped for this. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. Um, remember, we are in the Burnout Proof Business Bootcamp. We're going to, all the things that we're talking about, the whole point behind them is to help us build businesses and lives of freedoms, freedom and ease without burnout. That is the whole premise of everything that I'm teaching and everything that you and I are going to be doing together. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm always going to kind of start off, especially these first couple of days as we're getting started with some housekeeping reminders. I highly recommend no distractions during this time as much as you can. If you can't do no distractions, there will be replays that are accessible to you so that you can really, really make sure that you're focused when you're getting this content. So there's three different ways to access the replays. The subscriber hub replays are going to be at coachellen.com slash bootcamp. That is where you can can join the subscriber hub and you're going to be able to access bonus resources and those subscriber replays. There's also going to be a replay on LinkedIn, on the LinkedIn live stream, as well as a replay on YouTube. I'm trying to hit everybody where, where my people are at, which is on LinkedIn and on YouTube, um, especially where my people are at, where when we are on these websites, this is the cool thing I find about LinkedIn and YouTube is when we are usually using these websites, we are usually there to learn. We are usually there to, you know, absorb things. YouTube probably a little bit more for entertainment than LinkedIn, but I use YouTube all the time for learning. Um, so those are the places you can access the replays. The content will be removed on Friday, April 26th. So definitely keep that in mind um, if you were really wanting to make sure you catch up on this content, okay? If you are watching on LinkedIn or YouTube and you want to register to the subscriber hub, Definitely recommend scanning this QR code. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I was on another boot camp recently and they like flashed the QR code up on the screen like very briefly to the point where I couldn't even get my phone out fast enough to scan it. Um, so I want to make sure I leave this up here for a second. If you do register here, you're going to receive all of the replays. You're going to receive some bonuses and you're going to receive reminder emails for when we are going to be going live each day. And actually one of the bonuses I'm going to be posting later today after we get things started. So definitely keep that in mind. Another reason to register is not only will you get these replays sent to your inbox, all of that jazz, but you're going to get access to my subscriber hub. And my subscriber hub is a place where not only can you find this boot camp, but you're going to be able to find access to all of my other free resources. So every free resource I've ever created is accessible inside of the subscriber hub. I do have a couple that I need to add that I realized weren't in there, um, but you will get access to every free resource I have inside of my my business. And it's literally everything from this burnout proof business boot camp to things like my um what's your so what's your burnout type quiz, all of the different quizzes that I've created. I also have access to um all of my free events, um, my notion template, my biz owner burnout best practices webinar, um, my burnout guidebook, my burnout book list, like literally everything, including like my book recommendations and my my library of all of the books that I highly recommend. So you'll get access to all of that when you join the subscriber hub. And then you'll also be able to submit your homework. And when you do submit your homework, you get entered in to win a raffle, to win a scholarship to my Burnout Proof Business Program, which is coming up soon. So how you're going to enter the raffle if you want to enter the raffle is to engage in the subscriber hub, comment below the videos in the forum, do your homework and post it in the subscriber hub or email it to support at coachellen.com. 
and and or share on social media and tag me. So whether you share the live stream on YouTube, whether you share the live stream on LinkedIn, whether you take a picture of your screen and tag me on Instagram with, you know, being engaged in this every single time you do, you are going to be entered to win a $1,400 scholarship into my burnout proof business mini mind. So definitely get involved in that. And with that, we have a lot of stuff to dive in today. So let's start doing that. So for those of you who are new, maybe this is your first day. Firstly, if this is your first day, I would love for you to, you know, comment below wherever you're watching this, whether you're watching this on the YouTube live stream, whether you're watching this on the LinkedIn live stream. Um, I love how I just said live scream. <laughs> comment below if you are, if this is your first day. Um, and if you are, if this is your first day, my name is Ellen Shinky. I'm very, very happy that you are here. And in the past five years, I have founded my business. I founded Coach Ellen LLC. I also founded a second business recently. I created a podcast, a YouTube channel, physical and digital products, multiple courses and memberships, and self-published. I've worked with dozens of one-on-one -on -one clients. I booked over 50K in speaking gigs, all while working a full-time job. <laughs> I'm here to teach you how I did it, how I built a business as a burnout coach that is burnout proof so that you can do the exact same thing. If you are you know, somebody who is a service provider, a coach, or you're somebody who is building a business on the side, I feel you. If you're a solopreneur, I feel you. As I've said, I'm a one woman show. I do everything in my business myself. And I want to teach you a lot about how I do this. And today is a great gateway into figuring out how I do this and learning how I do this because systems are a big reason why I've been able to build my business the way I have. So the question of the day, and I've been putting these questions in here as good reminders over the course of the last couple of days. If you're an employee, but you're scaling a business or you don't have a business, is this still applicable to you today? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Absolutely. Is this applicable to you? Because if you are a busy human, if you've got a lot of stuff on your plate, you need good systems to help you wrangle that. So whether you're a business owner or not, though we are going to be talking about some things that are very business owner specific today, especially as we talk about systems, everything that we are talking about today, except those very business owner specific things are applicable to you. I would say probably 90% of the content we're going to cover today is incredibly applicable to you, whether you're a business owner or not. So don't skip away. Don't navigate away. Still make sure you register because you're still going to get tremendous benefit out of the content in this bootcamp particularly out of today's content. Because if you are a busy AF human, you need better and more sustainable systems in your life to help you wrangle all of the chaos that's on your plate. So can this work for me? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we will be covering today is, of course, we're going to be talking about what sustainable systems mean, what they are. But what we'll also be covering is leveraging a second brain, all-in-one systems and the difference between all-in-one systems and other types of systems. I'll get more specific on what that means in just a second. We're going to be talking about my CEO schedule. We're going to talk about sustainable content creation and sustainable offers. These last two might only be applicable for people who are business owners, but even if you are not a business owner, if you have any sort of interest in building a personal brand, sustainable content creation is still going to be very, very applicable for you. So that is still something that I would definitely pay attention to. So this is kind of where we're going today. So let's go ahead and let's dive into it. I want to start off with what most of us do wrong when it comes to systems. And if I'm calling you out, I'm lovingly calling you out because I promise you I've done all of these things. And if I am, if this is something that you do, drop a comment, you know, heart, like whatever, you know, let me know. I want to know if these are the things that are resonating with you. What most of us do wrong with systems first and foremost is we're spread thin. We keep information in way too many different places. And a lot of times it's not our faults. We have information coming into our world from a lot of different places. So we are receiving information from text messages, from emails, from phone calls, from conversations, from content we are consuming online, you know, from Slack, from, from inserts, you know, app here that you might be using for communication in your company or in your business. We receive information in 80 bajillion different ways. But the problem is when we then keep that information in a lot of different places. I used to be super guilty of this. I'd have this content in Google Drive. I'd have this content in Word documents on my computer. I have this content in, you know, insert productivity app here. I had even just the content that I needed to run my business and to run my life in half a dozen, if not more, different places. And that gets really confusing because we can't ever remember is this in Google Drive or is this here? We can never quite remember exactly where that information is being kept. And so it takes a ton of time for us to find it. We're also trying to remember too much. 
this is something that I've been saying for years. And I do think the, I literally work in education in my part-time work that I do, um, as you might already know. I think the education system did us dirty because there's so much in education in America that is memorized, memorized, memorized. But the fact of the matter is your brains are not a good, your brain's not a good filing cabinet. That's not how your brain was meant to work. Your brain is meant to innovate and create. So the more we can free up our brain to not have to just remember all of the things in our world and in our business and our life, the better. And our systems can help us do that. And I'm going to give you some tips for how to do this a little bit later. We're also creating unsustainable schedules, especially as business owners, we commit to schedules that we can't maintain, whether that is a posting schedule for social media or a posting schedule for our YouTube channel or our podcast, or just in general, trying to work. And this is for all my people who are side hustlers out here, which I've been you. So again, no shame for all of us who are trying to work a 40 hour work week in our day job and a 48 hour. 40 hour work week in our business as we're building our business, that's not sustainable. So that is another big thing that a lot of us do is we commit to these unsustainable schedules that from the get-go we know is probably going to be really hard to maintain and yet we still try to maintain it. So that is another big thing that we do wrong when it comes to systems. And that is a part of our systems. Don't get me wrong. Like schedules are a part of your systems. And then lastly, well, I think I actually one more after this, our lack of automation templates and workflows. Once we know something is working, we've got to leverage those things. It's going to make it so much easier. It's going to free up so much bandwidth. I love this graphic because I feel like this is what it should be like. Like we should have, you know, us doing our actual work and like these systems, which is basically like this little robot, like this kind of AI situation operating in the background, running things in the background. And that is what we want. That is the future for a lot of us that we want to create, especially if you are a solopreneur, a service provider, a coach. This is what we want to create. Because as I've said before, I used to be a manager. I don't really want to be a manager in my business. I don't really want to have like a team. I want to have a VA eventually. But what I do is instead of delegating to another human, I delegate a lot to technology. I leverage my systems to take things off of my plate. And that is because once I know something is working, once I know I like a setup, and I'm going to show you examples of all of these, I create an automation, a template, or a workflow to create more ease in that process. That's the whole idea behind creating these. And then the very, very last one, and this is a little bit of a word of caution, is the final thing we do wrong with our systems is we keep work and personal life too separate. This is another really big thing that I used to do wrong as well, is I didn't want to feel overwhelmed by everything that I had on my plate. So I had separate calendars for all of these different aspects of my life. But the fact of the matter is, and this is where I come back to the burnout definition I talked about in our previous days, burnout is holistic. Burnout is about the sum of all the parts and how those parts fit together. So if you're keeping your work and your personal life, your business and your personal life too separate, you're not going to be able to see everything on your plate and you're not going to be able to judge whether it's unsustainable or not. That is another really big thing that we need to think about when it comes to our systems is how does everything fit together? Personal life and work and business. That all has to be taken into consideration. And to demonstrate what I mean, this is exactly why I love master calendars. And I'm super excited. I actually just updated these calendar screenshots recently. Like literally, this is my week this week. And I know my coaching calendar is going to seem insane, but I promise not everything, all the things on this calendar are things that I'm committed to. But I was really excited when I did this because what it used to be is my day job used to be more full time. So I used to have way more on my calendar for my day job and way less on my calendar for my coaching business. I'm super excited to say that it's flipped the other way. But here is what my calendar looks like when it's just my day job. I'm just looking at the commitments and appointments in my day job, which I work part time now. I work about 10 max 15 hours a week for this day job now. And this is just what that looks like. Pretty manageable, pretty light. Then when I factor in my personal commitments, this is what that looks like. So I've got like my morning walks, my workouts, my, you know, I'm going out to dinner with my friend. Um, It's, you know, it's something that's happening on Sunday at my apartment complex. You know, these are just my personal commitments that I have on this calendar. Again, looks pretty light, looks pretty manageable. Then we get to my coaching calendar. My coaching calendar is a lot more full, especially because I have a, I'm doing a workshop on Friday and I have a photo shoot after that workshop. So this only includes client appointments, membership appointments, speaking in podcast interviews. It includes a lot of podcast interviews recently because that's something I've been really focused on recently. So this calendar looks a bit more full, but again, still manageable, right? This is still very, very, very manageable. Now look what, look what it looks like when I combine everything together. That is a very, very full plate. 
I can't add anything else to this plate this week. And I know this. Fortunately, I do still have a lot of space for recovery. Like Tuesday, like tonight, I have a lot of space for recovery. Thursday night, Saturday, I'll have a lot of space for recovery. But it looks very different when we combine everything together. And that's why I think master calendars are so stinking important. Because when we look at everything separately, like we saw in this view, it doesn't seem that bad. But it's when we combine everything together, like we do in this view, that we start to realize that is a lot. And this is not a schedule I would try to maintain and sustain from week to week to week. This is kind of the exception, not the rule when it comes to my calendar, but it's important to be able to see everything so we see how all of those parts fit together. And see, it goes for every aspect of our life, personal and professional. Are you giving yourself enough time to recover as a whole? Not just are you giving yourself personal activities outside of your professional activities. We need to have that rest and recovery time because we are... We are human beings, not human doings, and we do need to recover. All right, so let's start to dive into, this has all kind of just been background at this point. Yes, we talked master calendars already because I love master calendars, but I want to start by talking a little bit about what, you know, what sustainable systems are. I do believe, oopsies, my bad. I do believe sustainable systems are step one in this process. And I used to, as I said yesterday, I used to think of sustainable systems as being a later step in this process because I felt like we needed to do that mindset work first. But the fact of the matter is I find a lot of us need to create momentum in this process. And a big way we can do that is with our system because for most of us, our systems aren't working for us. They are not helping. They are not making things easier. Sustainable systems are meant to do that. They are meant to help you work smarter, not harder. And what it is about is it's about all the apps, all the tools, all the calendars, et cetera, that organize you and keep things running in the background. And really, that should be the aim with sustainable systems. We should have things running in the background that take the burden off of us, that take the mental energy off of us to have to think about and remember things. That is the whole point of creating sustainable systems. So the more you have that, the more things run in the background for you, the more you have sustainable systems. And I'm going to show you a lot of behind the scenes of my systems today. And I'm telling you right now, they're going to look probably a lot better than they sometimes feel because there are gaps in my sustainable systems that I'm still working to fill. But that's the thing with sustainable systems is once you realize, you know, this could be better, this could, you know, I could add this automation here. That's when you really, really start to create momentum with your systems. And it's about taking that mental bandwidth off of your shoulders. That's taking that, you know, that mental energy that you might have to pour into remembering things or, or paying attention to recurring tasks. It takes that off of your shoulders week to week, month to month, so that you can actually pour that mental energy into innovating, creating, and running your business, right? So that is what sustainable systems are about. So when I say sustainable systems, sustainable systems include your technology suite. So what technology you use to keep track of tasks and projects, what technology you use for your calendars, for your um, for your email, maybe. It also includes automations, templates, and workflows that you use. And we're going to talk more about these in a second. But it can also include, and this is where we start to get into some of the more specifics for business owners, it also includes your calendars. You know, are you using a master calendar? Are you using schedulers? I've said before, and I'll say it again, I think everybody, whether you are a corp, like an employee or you are a business owner, I think everybody should use schedulers, not only because it saves the back and forth emailing of, are you free here? Are you free here? It saves that back and forth. But what schedulers also do is they reinforce your boundaries so that you don't have to. Because in a scheduler, you can define when you are available and when you are not. So that's another thing. That's another kind of aspect of our sustainable systems. But it can also include content marketing. This is very specific to business owners, maybe for somebody who's building a personal brand. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this later. It includes your offers, which is very specific to business owners. And it includes your day-to-day schedule. And we're going to talk more about this later on as well. So this is kind of some of what we're going to be diving into when it comes to creating sustainable systems as a business owner. So before we get too far into sustainable systems, I want to talk a little bit about productivity styles. I have to credit a former client for introducing me to this. I think it was about four years ago when she introduced me to this. I never really heard of this before, but I love this because I think it really, really you know, speaks to the fact that we are, we're all different and we all approach productivity different. There's two main different productivity styles. And in the same way that burnout is a spectrum, I also consider this to be a spectrum. There might be some of us that are fully, you know, an integrator versus a segmenter, but some of us that might fall a little bit more in the middle. But these are our two productivity styles. Number one is the integrator. 
the integrator is somebody who doesn't have necessarily like a defined like nine to five. They don't necessarily work just from this time to this time. An integrator is somebody who, you know, they work in pockets and they work around their life. That is somebody who's more of an integrator. They might work on the weekends. They might work in the evenings, but they prefer it that way because they prefer the flexibility of being able to work when they want to work and being able to fit things around the rest of their life. So that's more of an integrator. I am definitely, and I kind of always have been, I was very much a segmenter and still am a segmenter when it comes to my day job and the work that I do for the education company I'm a part of, but I'm very much an integrator when it comes to my business. You know, I, last week's a great example. I took the entirety of Friday off last week, which I usually do work on Fridays, um, but I took the entirety of Friday off to go snowshoeing with my friends. And so I did do some work on Saturday that I wasn't able to get done on Friday. And I am super okay with that because I got the entirety of Friday off out snowshoeing in the North Cascades in the beautifulness. So I did a little bit of work on Saturday. I still got, you know, the majority of my Saturday, but I had a little bit of stuff to catch up on. That would be more of an integrator style of working. A segmenter is somebody who likes to keep things very separate. A segmenter is somebody who might have defined work hours and somebody who might, you know, have defined hours, which they consider to be for their personal life. This is, they like to keep those things very, very separate and they want work to be at a designated time. So this is somebody who, when they approach their business, they are very much, I work from this time to this time. If they'd taken Friday off to go snowshoeing, they would not have worked on Saturdays because Saturday is not a work day to them. They might've tried to get in some work on Friday night because Friday is a work day for them, but that's more of a segmenter's style. So I would definitely love to know which one are you, you know, drop it in the comments. Let me know which one are you, because how, what your productivity style is, is going to affect a lot about how you work and it's going to affect some of the stuff that we have later. So I also do have, and I haven't put this into the, um, I haven't put this into the, I'm having trouble speaking into the subscriber hub yet um, for today. But one thing I am going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put a little bit of a quiz into the subscriber hub for D2 for sustainable systems that is going to help you define what your productivity style is. So if that is something you need support with, definitely head on over to the subscriber hub. Again, we are, the subscriber hub is at coachellen.com slash bootcamp. Um, so head on over to the subscriber hub and you will get that. I'll post it at the end of this. Okay. I'm literally got it up right now so that I can remember that I need to post it. All right, cool. So we'll add the sustainability or not sustainability. We'll add the productivity styles quiz in here. Like I said, one woman show. All right. So like I said, though, your type of approach to your systems is going to vary depending upon the style that you have. If you are an integrator, or excuse me, if you are a segmenter, you are probably going to uh, uh, prefer the productivity suite approach. And how I think of the productivity suite approach is it means that you're probably going to want to use specialized apps for the different aspects of your business and your life because you tend to think compartmentalized. You tend to think segmented. So like you might have a specific app that you use for your email marketing. You might have a specific app that you use for project management. You might have an app that you use for clients and you might like it that way. And I'm not going to knock that in any way, shape or form. That is definitely a style that might best be best fitting for somebody who is a segmenter. An integrator, however, might prefer an all-in-one approach. They might prefer and they might selectively choose to utilize apps and tools that do more than just one specialized thing. As I've said, in my business, I am an integrator. I tend to like the freedom to be able to work when I want to work. Even if I don't start working until noon, I don't care if that means I work in the evening, so long as the overall lifestyle that I'm living is still that balance that I want. So I tend to prefer an all-in-one approach. So I look for tools, and we're going to talk about them in just a second. I look for tools that do more than one thing because I don't like to have to ping pong around to a whole bunch of different places on the internet to get my work done. I like to know that I can go to this one website and this one website is going to take care of like 80 bajillion different aspects of my business for me. That's my preference. So for me, like I, like I said, I prefer the all-in-one approach. And for me, my business runs primarily on two platforms. And I they just both happen to have beautiful black and white logos that <laughs> look really nice together. The majority of my behind the scenes stuff in my business runs on Notion. You guys probably heard me talk about Notion before. I'm obsessed with Notion. Notion has become a part of my business because I teach people how to use Notion and I teach people and I help people make their Notion workspaces. But Notion is a great all-in-one platform for me because as we'll see a little bit later when I show you some of my systems, literally every part of my business behind the scenes is inside of Notion. Squarespace is the kind of online 
part of my business. Because what I love about Squarespace is it's my website, but it's also my email marketing. It's my scheduler. It's how I sell packages. It's my invoicing platform. It's where I host my memberships and my courses. Like literally all of the online side of my business is in Squarespace. And I like it like that. I only need these two websites really to run the majority of my business. Yes, I use other applications for other things like Notion and Squarespace will never be able to be used to create like digital assets. For example, I use Canva for that. So these aren't the only two systems I use in my business, but these two systems right here probably run 75% of my business and I like it that way. So that is the integrator style. The segmenter style, again, like I said, it might be more of the productivity suite where you have multiple different apps that you're using, that is okay. It depends on your style, depends on what you like. And I like the all-in-one approach. That's just my preference. So as I said, I'll put that quiz into the resources. But one thing that I do think is a non-negotiable, whether you are a segmenter or an integrator. And again, the way in which you might approach this is going to be different depending on if you're a segmenter or an integrator. But something that I do feel like is a non-negotiable is to build a second brain. I was introduced to this concept um, probably a year and a half, two years ago at this point, um, by a man named Tiago Forte, who I started following on YouTube. Um, and I learned so much about his systems. I read the book that he wrote about building a second brain, but what a second brain is, is it's a digital repository for all the notes, tasks, projects, et cetera, that you would otherwise be asking yourself to remember. This is a game changer for so many people. This is why I built Notion into my business is to help people build their second brains inside of Notion. And how it helps you is it helps you from being a sticky note wrangler or a paper wrangler. I literally had, when I didn't have access to my second brain one day, this is this is what my my note taking turned into. And I have these, because it was recent, my, the, my computer was not functioning. So I have like all of these papers where I was keeping track of things and mapping things out and drawing things out that and I used to be somebody who had like a pile of dozens of sticky notes and sticky notes hanging all over my computer screen that used to be how I worked and how I operated but what a second brain gave me is it gave me a place to consolidate and put all of that information that would otherwise be scattered around and frankly made my environment feel disorganized I was able to put all of that stuff into my second brain localized and centralized into my second brain so that's the other advantage of a second brain is that it consolidates everything into one place, which is frankly what a lot of us need. So it streamlines where we go to access information. It also frees up our brain because again, our brains are not meant to be filing cabinets. Our brains are meant to create, innovate. That is what our brains are good at. And that is what having a second brain frees you up to be able to do. So the core tenets of a second brain are to capture and consolidate. Consolidate, meaning put everything into one place, but capture is the other really core tenant because the idea behind a second brain is when you think of something, when you think of a um, an idea that you have for a social media post, or when you think of you know an idea you have for that client that you're working with, when you think of those things, the idea is to capture it inside of your second brain. When you think of a random to-do you might need to do, the idea is to capture it inside of your second brain. And actually what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is I wanna show you guys how I do this inside of my Notion second brain, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my Notion. This is my little Notion HQ page here. But what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go over to my quick capture page because this is a page that I have up literally 24 seven, just about there are two tabs that I always have open on my second brain, this quick capture page. And then whatever the day is, I haven't actually done my day planner for Tuesday yet, but I always have this quick capture page up in my notion systems, because this is where, if I think of a task, I write it down in the task inbox. If I have a note that I need to capture for a client or just I'm brainstorming my idea, or maybe I'm in a, maybe I'm in a webinar, I'm in a meeting like this one. And I want to take notes on what I'm learning. I will pull up a new note and I write it down. It's also where I capture my content ideas. So if I think of a post for Instagram or I think of a podcast idea, or if I think of a YouTube video that I want to record, I capture it here. And we're going to be talking about this a little bit later when it comes to sustainable content creation. But this is one of the core tenets of having a second brain is to capture things as they come to you. Don't ask yourself to remember. Don't ask yourself to just like write it on a sticky note and get to it later consolidate it, and put it all into the second brain. This has been, like I said, a game changer of a, you know, a practice for me. And it did take some, you know, some doing. It did take some 
time for me to get used to doing this because I used to be a paper planner person. So definitely give yourself that space to get used to this. I'm what I did. And if you are a paper planner person, you are a sticky note wrangler. You are somebody who is, you know, you keep track of all your things on random pieces of paper and on sticky notes. Here's my recommendation. When you start using a second brain, what I did is I basically created a sort of like end of day meeting with myself. And I would take all of the random sticky notes and all of the pieces of paper that were generated over the course of the day. And I would move all of that information into my second brain. So that is, and then eventually what started happening is instead of writing it on a sticky note, I just put it straight into my second brain. It took some time, but that's eventually the kind of modification that I made. And that's the the behavior change that happened as a result of using this. So build a second brain. I personally think this should be a non-negotiable for everybody. What is in my second brain in my business? And I'm going to give you a peek inside of it in just a second. I have project and task management inside of my second brain. I have all of my client portals and my sales CRM, which I'm probably not going to show you because again, personal information. I have my financial trackers inside of my second brain. I have my content calendar and content planner. I also have stuff for my personal life inside of my second brain. Like literally like this notion template runs my life. Notion's never allowed to go out of business because I don't know what I'm going to do if they do. Um, But I have my finance manager, my personal projects, and my habit and book trackers inside of my second brain as well. So let's actually, let's take a look at what my second brain looks like for my business. So this is, I think I'm sharing what I want to be sharing. Yeah, cool. This is my um, quick capture page that we just took a look at. This is my business HQ. So inside of here, inside of my business HQ, even just on this main page, what I can see here is I can see the tasks that I have due for this week. I can see my task inbox. So these are the things that I have. I must have something wrong with my filters in this view, but this is supposed to be the things that I have put down as to do's, but I haven't actually done anything with. I actually thought I had this um, recurring task turned off. But anyways, I have my active objectives. I have my active projects. I have all sorts of the active things that I am working on. But then you can also see over here, I have quick links to some of the main things I use. Excuse me. My throat has been very scratchy this week. So I have my content creation hub. Let's actually go inside of here because the content creation hub is actually the thing that I use very consistently. This is where I do all of my content marketing and content planning. Um, So I've got all of my different platforms that I might post on down here. But the biggest thing that I probably use the most day in and day out is this content calendar. So this on top shows me everything that's in progress. But down here is very much the meat of the whole thing. This is the content plan. And you can see just about every day of the week, I have something scheduled to be posted, whether it's on Instagram or it's on LinkedIn or it's a newsletter. This is this is the content plan. And this is where I, if I have late content, this is where it shows up down here. And I actually think some of these are inaccurate. So I need to go through and update that. But that's my content creation hub. Then if I go back here, I also have um, my business review. So I review my business um, every single month. Um, I also have my speaking page where I can see all of my active speaking clients. Again, for for privacy reasons, I'm not going to go in here. I have my clients and CRMs, which you can see here. I have all of my one-on-one coaching. And actually, one thing that I have in here as well, which is something I started doing recently, is I have all of my client portals in here. Um, I'm actually, I don't know if I can pause my share while I pull this up. Let me see if I can. I'm a little, actually, I'm not going to do this because if it doesn't work, I don't, I don't want to share people's personal information, but I have client portals. So all of my clients, their portals are on Notion as well. Um, I have um, all of my, my memberships, my client resource library. So I actually, every client that I work with, they have access to this client resource library. So depending upon what they are dealing with, depending upon, I also have organized from where I got the resource. Um, I also, and then I just have an all of my resources thing. So every one of my clients, my one-on-one coaching clients gets access to this so that they can utilize these resources if they want to, or if they need to. I have all of my like core tools and teachings that I keep track of in here. Like this is literally like, this is my home base for my entire business. I even have all my referral links in here, some of which I still need to find my referral link for. But like every aspect of my business I have inside of here, all of my products, all of my services that I sell, it's all in here. And same thing for my my personal life. So that's just my Coach Ellen HQ. This is is just like this next page that's been a little bit slow loading lately. So I apologize for that. This is my my life HQ. So I have everything inside of here. I have my habit trackers. um, I have my productivity hub, which is where I would do all my task and project management. Literally, I have a page for Christmas gifts. These are all old, <laughs> so no, not giving away anything for anybody. Um, I have a writing page because I do do a little bit of writing. I have my OKR goals page. I have a vision board. 
Again, I do my reviews and reflections weekly, monthly, and quarterly all inside of here. So this is literally my second brain. Everything that runs my business in my life is inside of here. So that is why I am such a fan of this because you can see it literally does run my life. Now, a note that I will say on consolidating your systems, if you start anywhere, this would be my recommendation of where to start. If you don't have a second brain, if you don't have a system like this, highly recommend starting with this. I do sell Notion templates if you are intrigued by Notion. But one thing that I highly, highly recommend thinking about is consolidating your systems is very much going to depend on your productivity style. As you can see, I'm centralized. I have everything all in one place. But the thing I like about a system like Notion, and there are other systems like this, the thing I like about it is you can consolidate it all under one big thing, or you can break it out into this is for my personal life. This is for my volunteer work. This is for my business. You can break it out if you want to, which is much more how a segmenter might might think. So there's flexibility to this. I love Notion, but I will say with Notion, there is a there's a learning curve to Notion. So if you are wanting to get started in Notion, I highly recommend getting started with templates because the great thing about Notion is also the terrible thing about Notion. Notion is a blank slate. So you can build a system in Notion that is exactly how you think, that fits exactly what you need. That is the wonderful thing about Notion. But the fact of the matter is Notion's a blank slate. So to get started in Notion, you have to build what you want it to be. And that can be very, very intimidating and very overwhelming. So as much as I love Notion, I will say that there's that caveat. I do sell Notion templates if that is something you are interested in. If you want that system that I just showed you, I sell, I sell that system. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Drop a comment. I'm, I'm happy to, to hook you up with my Notion systems. So um, knowing your productivity style and the technology suite you want to build and creating that second brain, that what I would be what I would say is phase one of creating sustainable systems. Phase two, which is kind of your level up, is going to include some more advanced, but definitely very, very effective steps. And those steps are going to be automations, templates, workflows, and batching. All of these things are going to come together to contribute to having sustainable systems, to having sustainable offers, marketing, and to feeling like you are running your business and your business isn't running you. That is really, I think, the end goal of having sustainable systems is to feel like you are running your business and not that your business is running you. So let me give you a little bit of a peek into what some of these things might look like. I feel like when I do sustainable systems, I do a lot of show and tell because I want people to be able to visually see. I know so many of us are visual. I want us to be able to see what this looks like once it's put in place. Now, one thing I probably should have said earlier, I know I'm introducing a lot of different things when it comes to sustainable systems because I kind of want to paint a vision and a picture for you of what's the end goal, what we're aiming for, so that you can get really excited about building these systems for yourself. But I will say that part of this might feel overwhelming because it feels like a lot to do. That's why I started to try to break it up into phases. If you are completely new to sustainable systems, Start with phase one, figure out your productivity style. Again, I'm going to post that quiz once the webinar is over. Um, figure out how you want to build your technology suite and create your second brain. Those are your action steps to start with. And I would literally do it in that order. Productivity style, then technology suite, then second brain. If you aren't new to sustainable systems, you kind of already know your productivity style. You already know what technology suite you want to build. You already know or you already have some at least the basics of your second brain. Then we want to move to phase two. So that's kind of something I want you to think about. I don't expect any of you, if you're brand new, to have all of these things in place, you know, in the next like week or month. Please, God, don't. Just start with phase one if you are very, very new to this. But let's start looking at what phase two looks like. Because again, this is about painting that picture for you. So an easy way to start off phase two, to level up your systems, is to create templates. And as I said, I can do a little show and tell here and tell you all of the places where templates show up in my business because they show up freaking everywhere. First is Canva. Every digital asset in my business exists as a Canva template, exists as a template inside of Canva. Literally, I, I would share the screen with you, but because, but I can't right now. I said, sorry, I would share the screen with you, but I'm actually presenting from inside of Canva right now. Actually, maybe what I could do, let me see if I'm going to grab a window and I'm going to show you the web browser version of Canva. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So Canva is basically a beautiful tool if you need to do any sort of graphic design. 
in your business. This is kind of what Canva looks like. I have had a pro account with Canva for forever because what I love about Canva is that you can set it up to brand. And you can see here, I've got, this is our Burnout Proof Business Bootcamp that I'm running right now. Um, but usually what I do is I usually have very templated presentations. This is actually the one presentation that looks a little bit different. Um, I have YouTube cover templates. I have workbook templates. So every single time I create a new workbook, I just duplicate this template here and make the new workbook. I have um, cover photo templates, like literally you can see how much I use Canva and all of these are different templates for store downloads, for, um, for different presentations. And I use it for my multiple different businesses. So I have one for um, my, all the green stuff is for my coaching business. And then when we get down to this teal Navy down here, that's for my tutoring business. So Canva is another massive, massive tool that I use to create templates inside of my business and to templatize things. Cause, and the whole idea is once you have a digital asset that works, just keep using it over and over and over again. Just keep using it. The other thing that I do that is templatized is my content marketing. I have templates for my podcasts. I have templates for my blogs. I have templates for everything inside of my content marketing. So every single time I create a new blog post on my website, this is the template that gets, that gets applied. This guy right here. Every time I create a new podcast on my template or podcast show notes, I duplicate this template right here. So I have templates for all of that. I even have templates inside of like Audacity, which is what I use to edit podcasts. I even have a template for that. So everything that I do in my business, I create a template for basically to help expedite and shortcut. And then as I already said, Notion. Once I've set up a workflow that I like, it becomes a template inside of Notion. Let me go ahead and I'll reshare my Notion screen so you can see a little bit of how I templatize inside of Notion. Hmm, what would be a good, actually, I think the day planners place is a good way to do this. So each day I apply one of these day planners down here to help me plan out my day. And these day planners are templatized because once I found something that worked, I just wanted to use the same template over and over again. So Tuesdays, um, my theme for Tuesdays is clients and client calls. And so what I do is, oh, shoot, I probably shouldn't scroll down to show you my clients. But what I do is I have down here, this is a database. You guys can't see it right now, but this is a database right here where I have all of my one-on-one -on -one clients. And I look at that database and I figure out, you know, who are the clients that I'm meeting with today and help set priorities for the work that I'm doing with those clients. Um, but I have similar templates in place for the other days of the week as well. Let me show you like, um, I'll actually show you my Monday because my Monday is a template that I use every single day or every single week. <clears throat> My Monday theme is planning and learning. So I have steps in here where I use it to plan and review my week. Um, and then I have all of the different programs that I am enrolled in or all of the different courses that I have access to so that I can spend some time learning on Monday. So that's another way that I templatize inside of Notion is I use it to help me plan my, my weeks and my days. But I actually think probably one of the biggest places I templatize is I templatize inside of my content creation. So every time I create a new um, piece of content or I have a new idea for a piece of content, I will apply these different templates for the different type of content that it is. So like, for example, YouTube video, this is the template for a YouTube video. And if I were to actually, let me just create a YouTube video one. Every time I create a new YouTube video idea, this is what's really cool once you get your system set up is I have a little button in here inside of my Notion systems that I just click this and look what it does. It automatically creates all of these tasks that I'm going to do to put this piece of YouTube content out. And then all I have to go ahead and do is assign when I'm going to do these tasks. Or frankly, the majority of the time, I don't assign the when I'm going to do these tasks because I do content work on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But you can start to see how these become workflows. I even have this when I am onboarding a new client. Again, I'm not going to share my client portals and my CRM with you guys, but I have a very, very similar system in place where when I onboard a new client, I click a button just like this one. And it not only asks me, hey, do you have room in your calendar to take on this client? I have to say yes before it will continue. And then it will create a whole bunch of onboarding steps for me to engage in. I can't wait until I actually get a VA because it's going to make my life so much easier. And I'm not going to have to do these things on my own. But the fact of the matter is that I have templates and I have workflows in place to really, really help me in this situation. And that is the goal that we want to create. So that is a great way to do things. Um, and actually, I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself because I started getting into workflows as I was sharing that part with you. So it's not just about templatizing things. It's also about 
creating workflows for yourself. And a lot of my workflows exist inside of Notion as those little buttons, as those little buttons that I can just click and it populates. All right, cool. These are the steps you got to take to get this thing done. And I have set that up for myself to make it easier. And I've set it up for numerous other clients. I have another client where we built her Notion second brain from scratch. And we did something very, very similar to what I did with the day planner. She's got themed pages, depending upon the day of the week that it is. And it will pull in the information that she needs to do the work that she needs to do on that day of the week. Notion's really freaking cool, right? Like, are you as excited about Notion as I am? I nerd out on Notion. So if this is something you need support with, I absolutely can hook you up and help you out. All right. The next step I would say in here is creating your schedule. And what I do is I call this a CEO schedule because creating a sustainable schedule is absolutely a part of creating sustainable systems in your life and your business. So what creating a CEO schedule can do and how it can help with that is by helping you batch. We've probably all heard of task switching, right? It's a very common thing now. But the bottom line with task switching is that we're not as effective when we're constantly switching back and forth between tasks. And that is something I have been super guilty of. And honestly, it's probably why some of my work hasn't been as effective as it could have been in the past because I was constantly switching back and forth between different types of tasks. So to help with that, I constructed what I call my CEO schedule. So what we have to do, um, first and foremost, I don't know why it says the second task, but um, oh, it says to take a second to ask yourself, what are the broad categories that your work falls into? And we're going to use these broad categories in just a second. So for me, my broad categories were generally speaking, learning. I'm a big like personal growth and continuing education human. Um, client work, because I work with one-on-one coaching clients. I have clients in my memberships. I have you know clients in courses. So client work. Content creation. I also consider speaking clients to be under client work, um, but content creation is another big aspect of my business. You know, whether we're talking YouTube or podcasts or LinkedIn posts or whatever, content creation, newsletters, all of that falls under content creation because content marketing is a big way in which I, you know, attract new people into my business. Um, So content creation is another big thing. But then I also have projects because I'm constantly creating, you know, what's a, what's a new option I might need? What's a masterclass that I want to run? I'm constantly thinking about new courses I might want to put together. So I just call all of that kind of stuff projects. And then another big category for me in particular, and this might not be for every single business is review. And when I say review, what I mean is I do a lot of self-reflection in my business, in my life personally. I am, that's kind of actually how I feel like my former scientist brain comes into play here is I really find tremendous benefit from just gathering data from my life and doing constant review is how I do that. So as you've probably already seen is I've already talked about that. I do reviews and reflections weekly, monthly, quarterly for myself. Personally, I do reviews and reflections in my business. So review is also a big part of my business. So take a second, ask yourself, what those broad categories might be. Are any of these broad categories very applicable to you? You know, I entirely might have missed a category for myself, but that's kind of uh, something that I know and that I'm willing to refine and repeat over time. But think of what those broad categories might be for yourself. And then this is what we're going to do with those broad categories. You're going to start to construct a schedule for yourself that aligns with these broad categories. And now if you are somebody who is an employee, you are working your business outside of your day job, it might not be as clean as this. That is okay. That is a hundred percent. Okay. For me, even as I'm, cause I'm still kind of phasing out my day job work as I work more and more full-time in my business. A lot of this is still just like my ideal schedule and it doesn't always pan out perfectly this way. But basically what I did is I decided, okay, Monday is when I like to do planning and learning. So that is going to be my theme on Monday is when I'm going to plan for the rest of my week, reflect, review. So that is my focus on Mondays is to plan for my week, to engage in any courses or programs that I'm in so that I can make sure that I'm not doing too much task switching. That's really what this is meant to help us avoid is to help us avoid constantly task switching throughout our day. Then Tuesday is all about clients and client calls. I do tend to take the majority of my clients on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's more and more what I am aiming toward is to create, um, to work with clients on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I focus on Tuesdays on coaching calls with one-on-one clients. I have my weekly office hours in my members club. Tuesdays are very, very client and client call focused. Again, to avoid task switching. And then on Wednesdays, I am creating. This is the day where I'm working on content creation, when I'm writing, 
this is the big time when I try to do a lot of my podcast recording, like YouTube videos, blog writing, newsletter writing. I try to do that on Wednesday. I also try to block off Wednesday so that I don't have any meetings on Wednesday. So Wednesday has become a kind of a free day in my calendar where I don't have calls on Wednesday. I might have podcast interviews or calls for like, I'm in, I'm in a program right now where I'm learning, you know, I'm kind of trying to get better at, at sales. And I'm also in a program right now where I'm trying to get better at using LinkedIn. Um, so um, I do a lot of those on Wednesdays, but I don't do client calls on Wednesdays. Thursdays is another client focused day, but it's for clients and projects. So on Thursdays, I do host a free weekly co-working on Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to join, let me know, drop a comment. I'll share the link with you. Um, but I do co-working um, on Thursday mornings. I also have um, more one-on-one coaching calls on Thursdays. And then I do a lot of behind the scenes and projects work on Thursdays. And then on Friday, this is, I kind of call it my growth and my wrap up day. Friday is a little bit more of a free for all because eventually what I want to do is I want to not work the full day on Friday. I only want to work a half day or maybe even just take Fridays off. So I call this growth and wrap up because on Fridays, what I try to do is reflect on my week and then just wrap up any loose ends. So this might be getting some client work done. It might be, you know, maybe I'll have the odd one-on-one coaching call on Fridays. Generally speaking, I try not to have too many coaching calls on Fridays because this is my growth and my wrap up day. So it's about creating a, what I call a CEO schedule for yourself, where you have themed days as best you can. Again, it's going to be imperfect for you to be able to focus on one thing, one aspect of your business over the course of the day. And the great thing about once you construct a CEO schedule is you can then set up the other parts of your systems, like set up your schedulers to support this. Right now, my schedulers are set up so that my clients can only schedule onto Tuesdays and Thursdays. In the off chance that doesn't work for one of my clients, I might allow them to schedule on Fridays, but my scheduler is set up or Tuesdays and Thursdays. What I need to do is I need to change all of my schedulers to be like that, to make it so that I'm not constantly on video calls. That's actually something I'll put in my to-do list. Here, we're gonna do that. We'll put that in my quick capture right now. So you can actually see the quick capture in action. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna navigate over to my quick capture and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say to update all schedulers on Acuity to only allow scheduling onto, I would probably say Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That would be the goal. So, and I can put that in to my calendar for today and I can make that a quick task because that is a quick task. All right. So there you go. There's actually the capture aspect of this in action is me plugging that to do action in here. So that is the CEO schedule. And again, it's going to be an ideal for a while. And then you're going to slowly but surely modify your habits and your behaviors to better reflect that CEO schedule. Now, an advanced aspect of systems creation, sustainable systems creation is automations. And there's a lot of ways we can do this. It's going to be about leveraging the internal functionality of your second brain system. So whatever application you use for your second brain and the external functionality of tools like Zapier, for example. There are a number of different automation tools that we can use online. Zapier is one of them. So these types of things help me to sync sales into my finance tracker, which is inside of Notion, to bring prospective clients into my CRM. I actually have an automation set up that when somebody submits an application form through my my coaching application and through my speaking applications on my website, what it does is it goes from my website on Squarespace through Zapier into Notion and plugs them into my CRM. That is an automation that I set up. So that's another way it does that. Brings Facebook leads into my email client. It saves Zoom recordings into Google Drive because honestly, I get so sick of Zoom constantly being like, you're running out of space. So I save Zoom recordings automatically into Google Drive. I also use it to create automated automated tasks and reminders in my project and task management. In fact, that is a big thing that I do inside of my Notion systems. You can kind of see it here is when I do this drop list here, this drop list is all automated tasks that I have, automated reminders that I have inside of my Notion systems. Not all of them are on, only the ones that have the little blue arrows next to them are on, but these are all automated tasks because the more I can take the you know, the pressure off of myself to remember to do something, the better. So I automate a lot of tasks. And you can see it is also for personal things. Print out new insurance cards. <laughs> That's a personal thing, right? So I have it for um, things that I need to do for my business and things that I need to do personally. I use that a lot. 
Let's also, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a tab so I can show you Zapier. I personally have been using Zapier for years. I know there's other automation places that you can use. Zapier has been my preferred one because I find Zapier is the most established. And Zapier, you want a platform that is established when you're setting up automations in your business because the more established a platform is, the more it's going to be able to connect to your external apps, right? So that is why I like Zapier and I've kind of streamlined a lot which automations I have running in Zapier. But as I already said, I have an automation for adding leads to my CRM for my coaching application and for my speaking application. So these are both on. I also have what is called a stand store inside of my, my Instagram account. And I have an automation set up to collect names and emails um, from leads and to um, collect names for a wait list to um, my burnout proof business program. I also have um, Stripe automation set up to bring any transactions from Stripe into my income tracker. I have, as I said, to bring a Zoom recordings. And then what I've also used, um, I've also used Zapier in the past to automate um, calendars and automate scheduling. So you can see all of these are different things that I have used Zapier for in the past. But Zapier is really, really great, really, really handy for setting up automations. It is kind of, as I said, an advanced thing to do inside of your systems, but it's super, super helpful. And I highly recommend if you are already established in these other things, you've already got templates and automation or templates and workflows in place, automations might be the next step that you need to take to really create sustainable systems. All right. And as I said, I can do this for both my business and my personal life inside of all of these systems. I have automation set up for my personal life and for my business. I have workflows set up for my personal life and my business. I will sometimes even schedule, like if there are things that I forget, I automate them and I schedule them out. Like getting, checking my mail. Sometimes I need to be reminded to check my mail. Um, it could be um, cleaning tasks. All of these things get set up inside of my systems. Again, to take the mental energy away from the thing and away from me having to remember, it just pops up in my to-do list and that saves me so much mental energy and that's why I do it. So last but not least, I want to talk about some things and we might go a little bit long today. I usually only set aside an hour for these, but there's a lot to talk about with systems. But I want to talk about some of the things that we need to think about as business owners. And that's why I wanted to talk about content creation. When it comes to content creation, the first thing we need to do as business owners is commit to a content schedule we can maintain. That is step one. The last thing you want to do when it comes to content creation, whether we're talking a, you know, posting on LinkedIn or your newsletters that you're sending out to your customers, or, you know, maybe you have a podcast or a YouTube channel. Again, I speak a lot to coaches, service providers, solopreneurs. So if that's not applicable to you, just ignore it. But for a lot of coaches, service providers, and solopreneurs, we commit to content schedules we can't maintain. And frankly, the last thing we want to do is overpromise and underdeliver. The last thing we want to do is say, hey, I'm going to have a bi-weekly podcast and then not be able to commit to that schedule without running ourselves into the ground. So that is the first thing. When I started my podcast, I was in a season of just having a lot of stuff on my plate. I think I was still a manager when I started my podcast and I didn't want to commit to weekly podcasts. That seemed like too much. So I did monthly podcasts. In my YouTube channel right now, I have been, and I've been very communicative with my people on YouTube, my subscribers on YouTube, that I'm getting back into YouTube, so I'm going to be inconsistent. I said I'm going to post at least once a month, but I'm probably going to be a little inconsistent for the time being. That is a that is the promise that I made to them. So don't overpromise and underdeliver. That's the worst thing you can do when it comes to content creation. Find a schedule that you can actually commit to, even if it's less than what's ideal for you. Find a schedule you can actually commit to and have that be your content schedule. The other thing I recommend is to keep a running list of content ideas. We've kind of already taken a look at my um, content planner inside of Notion, but let's go ahead and quickly take a look at it again. Because the biggest thing that I do, as you've already seen on my quick capture page, I have a place where I can capture ideas as I think of them. This is an aspect of my content creation that has worked wonders for me is be able to, anytime I think of something, even if it's an idea that I never actually use, I write it down. Doesn't have to be something that you're committing to doing, just capture the idea. And then when I want to go in and actually build out my content schedule, look at all of these ideas. And actually this is just for Instagram. That's not even ideas for everything. This is ideas for everything. And all of these lists, like I have it limited for how much I can load. Like this is, this isn't even all the content ideas I have plugged in here. 
So have a running list of content ideas, because then when you have to actually build your content calendar and build a content schedule for yourself, you're not starting from scratch every single time. That is, again, the beauty of that second brain and that quick capture combined with content creation. It makes it, makes it so much easier. The other thing I recommend is batching creating content. This is something I probably started doing like less than six months ago. Oh my God, has it been a game changer? I literally will record all of the podcasts I need for the month in an afternoon. I will create all of the, you know, newsletters that I need for the entire month in an afternoon. That is because of the CEO schedule and that is because of, you know, batching. So I highly recommend doing this if you are somebody that does a lot of content creation in your business. And then last but not least, use content schedulers. I have fallen in love with Meet Edgar as a tool. Meet Edgar is a fantastic tool. And I'll actually go ahead and I'll I'll add this to my resources as well. If you want to check out and try Meet Edgar, I'm pretty sure I have a referral link where you can get a discount. Um, So I will go ahead and put that into the resources inside of the subscriber hub as well. But what I love about Meet Edgar is Meet Edgar repurposes the content that you've already posted again and again and again. So you just add it to basically like this funnel. And when you don't have anything else that's new to post, you don't have anything else that's scheduled, Meet Edgar will repurpose old content, which is, I love that about Meet Edgar. So that is something that we can think about when it comes to content creation and sustainable content creation. But last but not least, I want to talk about sustainable offers. (laughs) I love this picture of me. My, My photographer is very proud of herself when she captured this picture of me. But one of the things I think we need to think about when you are a, again, a service provider, a coach, a solopreneur, one of the things that we need to think about, or you're, you're building your business on the side outside of your day job, we need to think about our offer suite and the offers that we are offering. Because one of the mistakes I made early on in my business that did not help when it came to you know exhausting myself and overwhelming myself and burning myself out was all of my offers required something of me. They required time in my schedule. And I think that's a really, really important question to ask yourself is, is that the case for you? Do all of the offers that you have, do all of the things that you do in your business require you and require time on your schedule? And if that is the case, that is a recipe for burnout and overwhelm. And I'm speaking from experience when I say that. So I think a really important thing that a lot of us need to think about when it comes to sustainable offers is either to have things be high ticket enough that you can only have a handful of offers that don't take up an exorbitant amount of time on your schedule, but still, you know, sustain you and sustain you financially in your business or to have passive income streams in your business. I actually really enjoyed putting this slideshow together in the sense that I use it as a moment to reflect on my offers. Some of the income streams I have in my business are one-on-one coaching, which is active. That does require time on my calendar. Is speaking, which is also active. That requires actually sometimes good chunks of time on my calendar, especially if I'm traveling for speaking. My members club, which is recurring income, but it is still active. It does require time on my calendar. And then I have a number of passive income streams. Notion templates are a passive income stream. Courses are a passive income stream. Other digital products that I sell in my business are passive income streams. And then obviously commissions and affiliates are passive income streams. And this is probably just scratching the surface. It's not all of the income streams, but look at the majority of the income streams in here are passive. Do these ones make me the most money? No, but everything in your business and your offer suite cannot require time on your schedule and cannot require something from you week in and week out. Because if it does, that is absolutely an avenue for burning yourself out. So if you are a coach or a service provider or a solopreneur, you got to think about, do you have passive income streams in place in your business and how, how many of them, you know, what, what are they in terms of, you know, relative to your other active income producing activities? This is something we need to think of as well. So I know I'm just touching on this, but I think it's worth stating and worth reflecting on if you are a service provider, a coach or a solopreneur. All right. So with that, because I know we covered a shit ton of stuff, I know I'm a sweary human, even on LinkedIn, you just got to own it. Even though we covered a lot today, I want to recap what those things are. We talked about what sustainable systems are. We talked about productivity styles. We talked about using all-in-one versus a targeted, targeted suite of systems. We talked about second brains. We talked about templates, workflows. We talked about creating a CEO schedule, which is beautiful and very helpful for batching. We talked about automations. We talked about sustainable content creation and we talked about sustainable offers. As I said before, I would recommend starting with phase one, which is these first three. Figure out your productivity style, your your method of organizing yourself and building a second brain. And then the stuff down here is really level two. This is this is the, the advanced stuff. So focus on this stuff first. Focus on making sure you're confident and comfortable with these first three productivity styles, 
your system suite and your second brain, and then work up to templates, workflows, and automations later. But all of these things come together to help you create a very, very sustainable suite of systems that run your business instead of letting your business run you. So with that, some homework that I would highly encourage you to think about for day two. And as I've said, I know homework weird, but I want you to take action instead of just passively listening to these webinars this week. So some things I would recommend you doing is figure out what is your productivity style? Are you an integrator or a segmenter? And as I've said, I put a quiz inside of the subscriber hub, which is at coachellen.com slash bootcamp. I put a quiz inside of there or will be like within the next five minutes um, to help you figure this out if you aren't sure for yourself. And then what I would recommend you do is just to ask yourself, what do you feel like your systems need most to become more sustainable? What are the things that we talked about today that you feel like your systems need the most to help you become more sustainable? And really from there, just figure out what's the first step you can take to start creating that. To help, again, we can go back to this list right here, pause the video, look over this. Which one of these do you feel like your systems need most? the most. Do you have a second brain? If not, maybe that's the step that you take. Are you completely scattered in terms of the systems you're using and you're using 80 bajillion apps when you're more of an integrator and you want an all-in-one system? Okay. Maybe that's the change you make. So use the system to inform what is the thing that you feel like you need most and what's the first step you can take toward creating that. So these are some action steps to create. And again, to share your homework, I highly recommend sharing your homework to either support at coachellen.com or in the forum at coachellen.com slash bootcamp. Again, if you do, you're going to be entered to win a $1,400 prize. You're going to enter it into my raffle by engaging the subscriber hub, doing your homework and posting in the subscriber hub or emailing it to me or sharing on social media and tagging me. So each time you do, you're going to be entered to win a $1,400 scholarship into my Burnout Proof Business Mini Mind. And then with that, our agenda for tomorrow, where we're going tomorrow. So today was all about sustainable systems. Tomorrow, we're going to be covering sustainable self-care and what it means. And just to give you an idea of what that's going to look like, we're going to talk about a new approach to self-care. We're going to talk about different types of rest. We're going to talk about how to reset your routines and some great questions to ask yourself when you are resetting your routines. And we're going to talk about redefining movement. Plus, probably a lot more than that. I'm still putting together the slide deck for tomorrow. So that's where we're going tomorrow. Um, And I really, really hope to see you there for day three, which is all going to be about creating sustainable self-care. So with that, again, drop any comments, any questions, any things that you want to know about below. um, And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.